So for this episode of Complementary Pieces, we're talking about Tristan De Silva, who's a power forward, who's 6'8", 200 pounds, from Munich, Germany. He went to uh, Colorado, currently at Colorado, in his senior year. He was born May 5th, 2001, which makes me feel unbelievably old. In Munich, he is the son of Christine and Vladimir De Silva. His father was a professional boxer in his native Brazil and has a brother, Oscar De Silva, who was an all-Pac-12 forward at Stanford from 2017 to 2021. He went to Colorado in 2020, the 2021 season, averaged two points and one rebound in 24 minutes. He played sparingly in the first half of the season because uh, Jabari Walker, Blazers legend, played. But when he missed six games, Jabari Walker missed six games with a foot injury. De Silva showed that he had the ability to score and then score in a really efficient clip. So in those games, I believe he was hitting double digits in all of them. He Three, he shot 23 for 36 on 63 percent shoot, uh, two point shooting that season. Which, you know, a freshman taking advantage of an opportunity, you'd love to see it. His sophomore season, 2021, averaged nine points, three and a half rebounds, and just under two assists a game. Started all 31 games, and the only ones he missed was because he was sick. He was ranked second on the team in field goal shooting per game at 47%, 79% in free throw percentage, third in assist, and fourth in scoring and rebounding. He was ranked 12th overall in field goal percentage of the Pac-12 during the Pac-12 uh, conference play, and most importantly for him in his future, 47% from three. That's huge. Uh, NBA always you always value shooting over basically anything else and he's very efficient in his game he contributes in everything but he shot really well from three um his junior year he was an all Pac-12 conference first team selection got 16 points a game under uh shooting just under 50 from the field uh he run his season ranked uh, 13th of all time in single season scoring with 556 points made. Uh, he made 54 three point shots at a 39.4% clip, led the team in steals, uh, rebounds, was third on the team. In the Pac 12 charts, he was sixth in scoring, third in, uh, third in three point percentage, ninth in steals, and 10th in overall shooting. So this is his final year, his 2023-2024 season. 15 points a game, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, 50, uh, 83% field goal, 38, 36% three-point, and a block and a steal and a half a game. So let's let's talk about him as a player. I think you would rank him as like an off-ball four. If you were doing like a 2K archetype, he's one of those off-ball fours that... Uh, can spread the floor. I we talked about PJ Hall in last episode, uh, no, two episodes ago on uh, on this podcast, and he also had that ability to be an off ball guy that can contribute in other ways. Um, so talking about his offense shooting, Tristan is more than capable more than capable of knocking down catch and shoot threes, whether it's spotting up, which is standstill, or moving. He has shown the ability to hit those threes. His relocation is really good, and he's one of those guys that, let's just say Scoot gets the rebound and scoots down to the three-point. He can, once Scoot passes it, he can knock, he can hit Tristan with a pass, and Tristan has shown the ability to hit that three in transition. On an NBA roster, Tristan would be asked to spot up on the three and help space the floor for those star players. And I think that he absolutely can do that. But Tristan also can take advantage of the mismatches that come with a superstar player. He's shown the ability to finish against uh, smaller players by just posting them up, getting into the post, and just scoring. And then if you've got a taller guy in that mismatch, 
he he has the ability to get downhill and score in that downhill uh, action. I mean, there there's like plenty of clips of him getting the ball w- straight line cut and then dunking. I think that if you get Tristan De Silva, pick and pop has to be the main thought of how he attacks offensively. I think there is a chance that you can put some put him at a small ball five. Um, he he uh, can screen the guard, give them that advantage to score, and then is com- comfortable just you know in his stance, ready to catch the ball and, and shoot it at a pretty damn good percentage. Or if they close too hard, and this is something that I wish Chris Murray would get good at, is if they close too hard, he has the ability to put the ball down on the floor and make something happen off that aggressive closeout. Um. We're talking about Tristan De Silva, and I think the feel for the game is really, really, really high. But we're in place where I feel like it isn't translated as much as playmaking. He's made really impressive reads, and a lot of them happen to be in the post post playmaker type of role, where he's in in the uh, post, either uh, face up or backing down, and someone cuts. And he can lead him, lead the player that's cutting to the basket. And since they have momentum because they're being led, it's a much better percentage chance that it's going to go in and score. So I feel very comfortable with him having time to pick and choose where he's passing it and allowing him to do that. Once he earns like all of the coaches respect and the players respect I really think that he could pick out the player. He's never, ever, ever, ever going to create the defense reacting to him. And we'll get into that a little bit. But once the defense is broken, he can make the right play. And I, I we're at such a lack of legitimate playmakers. Now, I don't think that he's like, you know, joker with his post playmaking. But I think that he is an above average passer. Um but I talked about the negatives of him. With Colorado, I think he's over... They, they give him more responsibility than he probably can can handle in that because he is a four-year senior. Cody Williams is young, so he has a pretty decently high usage rate. I think I believe that it currently is over Cody Williams, who is a top-five pick in this draft. But when he's trying to dribble drive into... Playmaking, I think that it's where his playmaking turnovers come from because he's not the most athletic guy in the world. And he throws some predictable reads out of the uh, drive game. So not being athletic enough to just like confuse them and then having it be predictable, it goes into a lot of uh, potential runouts for the other team. They grab the ball, they go. But I, I, the feel that he has on both ends of the ball, uh, the court is really amazing. He just has to scale down from humongous part of the offense to pick and pop guy that, if given the ball, could make something happen. I think that that is totally fine to be asked to do. He's had years of showing what he can do in Colorado, and he definitely deserves to be drafted. But it's not going to be, you know, those do everything type of players go in the top five. We're talking Tristan De Silva, and he's somewhere between 20 and 40. So we got to find people that fit with the star players. So defensively, Tristan has really good feel on that end of the court. He has really good rotations and can test at the rim and kickouts. He knows where to position himself on the floor. And he can flip his hips really quickly when sliding his feet on the perimeter. So that sounds like I'm talking about Chris Murray. And I think that he is a really decent combination of Chris Murray and uh, Tumani Kamara defensively. Chris Murray is really, really fundamentally sound just like Tristan. But he doesn't go for any risky plays. He goes for, you know, high contests. And... Tumani, on the other hand, goes totally for those home run plays defensively. I think that Tristan De Silva is a good combination of the both of them to be a quality defensive player. 
I will say that his lack of athleticism can occasionally show up when he's guarding the perimeter, which is probably going to be what he does. And that, that's against like the De'Aaron Fox quick jitterbug guards or elite wing athletes. And when you're talking about that, there's not many guys that can defend those quick jitterbugs or, you know, the 99th percentile Asar Thompson's in the uh, league. So I really do like what he's doing defensively. It's really fundamentally sound. Blazers definitely need more people that understand the principles of defense. So I, I, I really dig what he does and provides on that side of the ball. Um, I think that strength would really be helpful for him when he's guarding the uh, wings in the league. He's not weak, but he's not totally strong. If he gets stronger, there is a pathway for him to be uh, scaling up in position instead of a four. He is a small ball five. I mean, he can shoot, but, you know, there's a lot of talent at the big, so it might not be as likely, but I think with added strength, he can be in that role as a small ball five, a stretch five, whatever you want to make about it. I think that he can fill that role. I think Tristan really is a classic production production a potential guy. His numbers have improved year by year, but there's never that explosion of production. It's just solid improvement. But with solid improvement, and you see it by points per game, by minutes per game, by everything listed in the, those first years, everything has gotten better. So I think that he can scale up to a role in the NBA a little bit easier than a person with just a gigantic, you know, one year, and then he has to scale down. You 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 saw what he can do in a scaled down version. I think uh, that that will be cool. But him just he knows his role. He knows that he is not the star. He knows that he's not the star in Colorado now. So I don't think there's gonna be any like pullback from him about his role as you know a rotation three four. And this is the first time I'm doing this, and I probably should be doing this more. Things that I wish he could improve on. If he could at at athleticism, that would be the most helpful for him in a long-term capacity. But seeing that he's 22, I don't really see an athletic boost, a big athletic boost coming when you're that age. You know, you see it from when you're younger, like the added athleticism. But as I mentioned before, strength would be the second thing that... I would uh, suggest for him to improve on. The strength is going to be a factor because he is a little bit of a poor rebounder for his size and for his role. And the Blazers absolutely have dealt with uh, poor rebounding in the past. So we don't want to add poor rebounding on poor rebounding on poor rebounding. So I believe that he can rebound better. Maybe it's a scheme thing. They have Eddie Lampkin who takes up a lot of space. So maybe, you know, playing in a more spread out offense and defense, he could get more rebounding. But it definitely is something that I'm a little bit worried about. I think the comps are pretty straightforward. It's I'm, uh, it's Santi Aldama. It's Fontecchio out of Detroit. I think if he hits, I think... Thad Young would be a very nice top end, uh, top end comp for him. So, how he helps the uh, Portland Trailblazers specifically? Obviously, the three point shooting is key here. They don't really have it. I, I would say when you have Scoot and you have Da and you have either. Bari or Tumani playing, you're dealing with three complete non-shooters, so the defense can just sag on them. When you have a guy that can hit three and can hit it from multiple different ways, I think it adds and it helps Scoot. You have a buddy for him to set screens and pop out. And Scoot Henderson's very, very polished at driving and kicking. So having someone who's very confident in taking a three and even if it's contested making it is really huge for him. I, and I think you can say the same thing with Shaden Sharp. These two athletes need to have two feet into the paint. So having somebody that can shoot 
of the three and then make a play for themselves or others using passing is it, 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 it is a very good fit. And let me look at what Tankathon has him now. And I know Tankathon might be behind on their uh, big board, but it's a product that we all use even if we uh, don't like to admit that we do. So Tristan De Silva's 35. I believe the Blazers have a pick that early. So they have 34. And they right now it's comp to Devin Carter, which I totally am in favor for. But Tristan De Silva in this mock that I'm currently looking at on Tankathon is 36. So he's really attainable. We're not talking about a world beater, but we're talking about a player that has a role in the league, who's a winner that plays in a team basketball concept. That's why I'm so uh impressed by how he plays he just plays like a winning basketball player and three years into this tank and i think it's time to think about building the team with competent players so if he's there in the in the 30s where we pick i absolutely would be happy with tristan de silva being one of the many wing players i think that he is a he's different than who we already have as a wing but he also is very similar with the fundamentally sound defense and the potential shooting. So thank you so much for listening. This particular episode is sponsored by Odd Shopper, which is an awesome Actually, it's not an awesome I've been such a fan of their products. I think of it as awesome first, but it's a stochastic, a stochastic uh, service where you get premium bets like i know a lot of people in oregon are starting to use the betting and uh draft kings in particular and they can give you positive expected value bets so it might not work today but if you continue to use their services it's going to be positive in, in terms of money over the long term instead of using you know your gut or you know, some other service. It's positive EV bets. So that's very, very valuable in today's betting. And they, they definitely take a market advantage. So if you do live in a city that allo- allows multiple sports books, you can shop your odds. So it, it's a very, very valuable tool. In Oregon, unfortunately, we're a DraftKings. And then you can use those pick'em sites as well. So you can find your best odd in the books. So definitely check them out. I'll put that, I'll put the code in the uh, bio of the text and maybe make a a, a sticker on it, but it is www.oddshopper.com slash desage. So I will put that in the bio of the, uh, the caption of the podcast. Thank you so much for everyone who's listened. Gives all this draft content a, a chance. Um, my goal for, doing all of this is we want to provide as much information as possible. And in this blazer sphere, there's a lot more podcasters, which is always a good thing. Having more people share their opinions, but to talk about these prospects that might be on the team. I remember last year we talked about Scoot Henderson and Chris Murray and Those were two of the guys that we drafted and we talked about them in like 30 minute episodes. So it was really cool to see the research that we did come into fruition and have them be part of our team. So thank you so much to everybody. I will be back. I don't know who I'll do. I I have Deron Holmes that I want to talk about with Ryan Buchanan. I have um, some other guys as well. So I'll be back doing more of the solo podcasts uh, on the complimentary pieces type of bonus episodes and obviously we on YouTube. So thank you, everybody. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your weekend if you're listening to this on the Sunday that I recorded and in all future listens for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We're out of here. Peace.